They just went not to preach the message of Jesus Christ. They went because they were seeking selfish gain. They went to enrich themselves. They went to advance their own agendas and to make a name for themselves. And if the truth be told, beloved, there are still people today that aren't sent, but they're just those that went. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. And they didn't go because they felt a calling on their life. They went because they saw an opportunity to make a buck. They saw an opportunity to trick the unsuspecting people out of their money. They went because they could use a platform of religion to advance their personal position. They went because they used religion as a way to make themselves look important because they aren't all that important anyway. They didn't go to help people change their life. They went to change the bottom line of their pocketbook and to increase their bank accounts. So yes, beloved, there are some that were sent, but there are some that just went. And those that just went are hindering the gospel. They're hurting the church. They hurt people. They take money from the poor people. Yes, my friends, Jesus even warns us. I had you read it as a response to reading that false prophets and false preachers would rise up in the last day. They would even use the name of the Lord and even deceive the elect if they could. That's why we must be able to discern those that were sent by God and those that just went on their own. Oh, see, to understand, beloved, the just went are too dangerous for the church to ignore. The just went are preaching false messages that move people's, that move people's attention off of God and onto the lust of the world. These just went preachers and prophets appeal to the worldly lust of the people and convince them to love money and the love of money is the end game. They preach messages like money coming. They have hundred dollar prayer lines. They take up 10 and 11 offerings. They tell you to throw the money on the altar like you at the strip club or something. They tell you to give your rent money to these false apostles. I'm preaching up here. You don't have to say amen. They take your money and get themselves a plane to fly from Virginia to North Carolina because they can't drive that far. Yes, they will. And they'll do this all under the guise of get-rich-quick schemes. Uh, they have set up religious pyramid and Ponzi schemes up in the church. Uh, they get on TV and sell you miracle water or miracle prayer cloths. Uh, uh, they tell you to give them your money because if you sow into them, you will get rich. Uh, they use cult-like mind tricks to sway you into believing that they're all about God when really they're all about the Benjamins, baby. They are not preachers. They are are pimps in the pulpit. They are shysters. They are false teachers. They are sorcerers. They are hucksters. They are jackleggers. They are money-loving tricksters. They are wolves in sheep clothing. They prey on the vulnerable. They prey on the weak. They prey on the desperate. They rob widows of their life savings and chase after members of their congregation for sexual favors. They are abusers and manipulators. They'll sell books and CDs on self-help and charge you big money to come to their conferences and seminars. They make you feel guilty if you can't give 10% of your money to them. John, that don't make any sense. When the average black family is only worth about $7,000 versus the average white family worth $144,000, it is a shame for folks to try to rob black folk of their money under that tithing myth. Amen. If you heard me before, I tell you and I show you that all we need to be given is what we're able to give. No more or no less. Uh, but these pulpit pimps will make you feel bad. They'll tell you that you're robbing God because they're misquoting Malachi chapter the three. They, we, look, the black folks have been under pressure for 400 years. We've been robbed and pimped and beaten and the last thing we need is some preachers robbing and pimping us. Uh, I'm here to let you know they have no conscience. They have no heart. They have no soul because their end game is not the salvation of your soul. The end game is money hitting the collection plate. These people, these pulpit pimps don't have a transformational ministry. They have a transactional ministry. Their ministry isn't to change you. Their ministry is a transaction of your money into their pockets. And you've got to be able to discern the scent versus the wind. In our text today, we get to see how you can see how who's the scent folk versus the wind folk. In verses 5, we get a picture of the, of the sent folk. Somebody say the sent folk. We have a glimpse into the church at Antioch. Antioch was a good church. 
wonderful believers, many in this church were some of the early believers who were persecuted in Jerusalem. Many of them had seen the miracles of Christ and been there on the day of Pentecost. Uh, they had seen the Holy Spirit fall. They seen the power of God. They seen the sick get healed. They seen the dead rise. They seen the blind get sight. They seen the lame walk. They seen the Lord and they saw the power of the disciples and they see that very power now within their own selves. And many of this church uh, where they were studied, they, were, they studied the word of God. They were diligent learners. They learned from the best teachers. Uh, many in this church were extremely dedicated and devoted to God at the point that even the text says in a few uh, chapters back that they spent a whole year studying the word of God just to get a good foundation so they could serve the Lord better. They were an excited church. They were a serious church. They sought the Lord diligently. They were real disciples, dedicated, devoted disciples who were diligently seeking God. It was in Antioch that the believers were first called Christians. These were good men and women of God. God, and the text says they had prophets and teachers in the church. That's verse 1. And when you read the names of some of the men they listed, uh, these were men of Jewish descent by religion, and some of them were African descent by race. Uh, Simon and Lucius lets us know their titles, that they were from Cyrene or Elijah. They were black men. These men were teachers and prophets of the church. Uh, so when your hotep and woke friends tell you that this is a white man's religion, uh, you show them this text uh, several thousand years, a hundred years before there was ever an America or an American slavery and chattel system of slavery or e European Anglo-Saxon church. Uh, there were Africans and Antioch, uh, but that is a side note. But I want you to let you know there was uh, this was a good church.